Yo, welcome to the first episode of the Africa podcast. And today I have like one of those, uh, you know, good friends of mine that I've never met physically, but we yeah. always see each other online. His name is Apu Sebekedi. Yeah, what's up, man? I'm good, Moaf. How are you doing? This is a long time coming, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as, uh, there's this rapper called Copyright who used to say it's a lo- it's been a long time coming, like su- uh, success for a porn star. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how's the name pronounced? Apu Sebekedi. No, uh, like literally, as 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 you guys as 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 you see it, you just say it like that. You guys tend to add an extra H for some reason. I don't know why. In your yeah. pronunciation, it's Apu, like as flat as it is. Apu. Yeah. Then then the yeah, other Apu, name. Yeah, Apu Sebekedi. That's it. Oh, the Sebekedi. surname is Sebekedi. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah. how's it say right now? Cold. We oh, cold okay. up here. We cold, dude. We cold. Yeah, like when you it's say cold, because. Nairobi in July is cold, yeah? But when we say cold in Nairobi, we mean 16 degrees, you know? It's 11 like, degrees now. Oh, it's 11 degrees. Okay. Now. Yeah. And it gets colder. Yeah. The lowest it goes? Lowest I've ever been in this side here. Yeah. Minus 10. Oh, minus 10. Yeah, but there's colder places like there's... There's Lesotho, there's Bethlehem. Those places are cold as fuck. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> there's Bethlehem in uh, SA. Yeah, there's a place called Bethlehem. I don't know if I don't know if, if it's pronounced Bethlehem or Bethlehem. What's type thing yeah. like that? But it, it's it's a small town just somewhere in SA, and they just have like record breaking low temperatures. It's the mountainous oh. areas. Yeah. Okay, because because Nairobi, ah, okay, Kenya is interesting because you have Nairobi that experiences like all temperatures, but we don't go extreme. I think like when we say Nairobi is cold, it's more, mostly fifteen degrees. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, uh, but but you're like equatorial, goes, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't have we don't have seasons. It's just yeah. You guys have you guys have like the best weather ever. Yeah, perfect days, perfect nights. You know, <laughs> flossa. Yeah. Because <laughs> <It's not. laughs> you you guys don't have that, yeah. Like you'll have a night that you can still see the sun. No, um, oh. in certain pla- in certain places like Cape Town, the sun might go down in a certain way because we're on the curvature. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Dude, let's stop it... talking the weather. Let, let's stop talking the weather. Let's get straight into it. Our, yeah, our yeah, let's... yeah. Let, let's. Yeah, let's. So not... You guys were leaving the rest of us Africa out on that podcast. You and DJ yeah. Zach, and by the way, I'm one of DJ Zach's biggest fans. I was on, I was on DJ Zach when I was, um, how long was it? Uh, 2000 and uh, I think this is run about the early 20, 2012, 2010. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you guys when you... were doing Get to Radio. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And okay. he was doing the hip hop show. Yeah. That was that was one of I was I was tuning into I was tuning into DJ Zach's show. I don't know if I was tuning into your show. Whatever happened to Ghetto Radio, bro? Yeah, Ghetto Radio. Uh, it's a long story, man. Like uh, all the original like members left, uh, but it's, uh, right now it's a long story. It's just like a whole different squad. So oh yeah, you know. But yeah, you guys left us out, man. All I ever wanted was subtitles, and you know what bugged me out? Yeah, is the is the fact that I caught you guys. I you guys didn't even think that I'm watching that. Even through wow. all of that Swahili, I was watching and I heard you going, yo, there's a guy in South Africa called when he's bummed out about the fact that you guys don't have subtitles. Yeah, I caught that. <laughs> That's how much I was watching. I got my finger on 80. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'd say like the reason why I was like, I need to do like an African podcast and African-based because yeah. I'm a big fan of Mark G. I don't know if you watch Mark G. Yeah, he's enormous, dude. He's enormous. Yeah, yeah. I, don't think, I, don't think that, I don't think that anybody gets what it means for a for a podcast in africa to have one million subscribers somebody yeah, like yeah. you should know in terms of how hard it is to actually get something of that nature you get yeah, what i mean yeah. in, in terms yeah, of being yeah. a content creator but literally having one million people follow you he just reached a million people the other day and it's a mm-hmm. big and it, it's a big and monumental uh, monumentous um yeah. occasion you feel me mm-hmm. yeah yeah i know i know i know and uh, some of us out here are, are really proud of that i mean i watch it on a regular and i'm not even trying yeah. to be on some other ish but i watch it as a things will happen during the week but i'm yeah. very interested in their perspective and their opinion on things and everything that that's going on okay that that, that makes sense that makes sense because i also watch it because uh 
I just find it in- interesting that an African podcast has reached that level. You know, like I remember, like the intro jazzes me because on the intro they talk about how oh we got 150 views and they're like yay it's from that to right now. You know, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so what what that's, you what's what, huge? Yeah, what you guys are doing is you guys are killing radio. Yeah. I, I, I stopped listening to radio a long time ago. I mean, I grew up on Top Radio, Radio 702. I grew up on Kate Turkington. I grew up on yeah. John Robbie. I grew up, I grew up on um, freaking all the Johns, man. John Koelani, John whatever. So yeah. it became very... And, and, and that, that was by default through my dad. Yeah. But when I, when, when I started listening to radio by myself, I got bored with radio because it got cheesy. Yeah. It got what? It got what? And then there's people like you. I mean, I was listening to you from this side. Yeah, I was yeah. listening to your show from this side. I'm like, oh, this guy's controversial, and that's all I ever got from you. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. And shout out to Akili. Akili was putting me on onto a lot of stuff that was happening out in East Africa. Although yeah. when yeah. I met him, I was already on to Kalama Shaka and then okay, thank God for what for 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 um for uh, Channel O. But oh. coming back yeah. to what we're saying, what you guys are doing with podcasts and what you guys are doing with content creation for uh online, it's beautiful because. Just literally murking and breaking the boundaries of what uh, normal TV is, of what normal radio is. There's so much that cannot be put into a space, and then you're getting right into the gist of things. And then we'll get back to you right after this break. Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Sell, you know what I mean? I yeah, love yeah, what I you guys are doing. It's very avant garde. Okay, okay. So uh, even that's like one of the things I wanted to ask you because um recently there was this um like a uh, Kenyan music legend. His name is Juakali. I don't know if you know him. Okay. Have you ever had the name? No, 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 no. Not that so much. So he was complaining no, about no, how uh, he was saying the way SA DJs are the reason why Kwaito and Amapiano are that big. And he was saying like yeah. the way Kenyan DJs are sleeping on the job. So what role do you yeah. think SA DJs have done in doing that? Because Amapiano is big here. It depends. Whoa. Yeah, it's huge in I'll Kenya. T- I'll, I'll t- I'll t- I think I think the question should be what role has social media played okay. in what uh, my piano and what 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 because uh, my my piano is the is the is the is what I excuse me is, is what I personally would consider second generation of what Kwaito is because there was um Kwaito and then yeah. a, 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 another pivotal stage of Kwaito moving forward was Gom which was yeah. just electrifying by itself. And okay. then my piano came through. My piano yeah. is a reflection of what can happen when you use social media to put out your music out there and you have social media reach. Yeah, Because what you guys are seeing right now is a result of kids taking control of, of, of their content. Yeah. What you guys are doing. Yeah, You get what I mean? You, you Beck G, and a lot of other guys that are, that, that are doing ways that they're taking control of um, the content that they create and they're putting it out on social media without the assistance of like radio, without the assistance of like normal media. So personally, from my perspective, from how I saw my piano growing, my piano was growing on social media more than anything because it was happening on the streets. Okay. You feel me? Yeah. And then some of your big names like Maporisa. Maporisa was one of the biggest, um, let's say the white revival. There was a time when there was a very tribal thing, our core. Now they revived... Um, they revived uh, uh, um, Toz' uh, uh, career. They brought them back, what you call this, my figures all low. They did a yeah. lot of stuff for Galawa Jasmine. Mm. And then right after that, he got into the GOM. He was a very prominent do- uh, gatekeeper, dare I say, gatekeeper yeah. in the GOM world. And then later on, then you started seeing my, uh, uh, um, my Purisa doing some uh, doing some work in the in the my piano stay in the my piano field with guys like Woke Up to the Small. Yeah. Um. Tuned and all of that. You know, this, this is a it's it's a field where where there's, there's a bunch of them. And another thing that's very important is the fact that they were collaborating. Like you'll find that I'm a and I'm a piano record has like six or seven guys on them. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Before yeah. it says featuring two more guys at the end. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's seven names before, so they're not afraid to collaborate. And ninety percent of the time, the guys that are actually making the music are the guys that are actually playing the music on the streets. Oh, okay. So if you're talking about the impact of the DJs versus um, or the, the impact of the DJs on the music, yeah, it's basically that the DJs that were creating the music, the, the, the people that were creating the music were also the very same people that were playing the music in the streets yeah. and in the clubs. Yeah. You feel me? And in the underground clubs. Mm. 
But now when it comes to the radio DJs, that's a different story. Okay, okay. That's a completely different story. Because I think that's what like the, that artist, yeah, as I was telling you, is a Kenyan legend. It's called Juakali. That's what he was saying. He was saying that yeah. he was saying Kenyan artists need to be involved in Kenyan music. They need to step yeah. into the studio and start production and just get involved. And that's the uh, and he gave the uh, example of Mapo. Are you saying Kenyan artists or Kenyan DJs? Kenyan DJs, Kenyan DJs. Yes. And he gave the specific example of Mapo as as you've called him. And he was saying like the way yeah. this guy was involved, he's a DJ, he's a producer, and that's the reason why ASA music is as big as it is. And I think you've yeah. just you've just confirmed the same thing. You're just saying it's like, yeah, the the DJs are also producers. And that's why you've Can't, what are you guys what are you guys playing there on the streets though? No, uh, our Kenyan DJs, man, we play your shit. We play Nigerian shit. We play everyone except Kenyan. <laughs> that's that's it's just a Kenyan thing. <laughs> hey man, I'm I'm gonna get in trouble with a lot of Kenyan guys, <laughs> a yeah. lot of Kenyan artists. Yeah. Shout out to shout out to Mwanda Mundu the Third, mm. um, Akili Black. You guys grew up together. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's 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 my beat sensei, and I'm a monster. Don't get me twisted. I'm a I'm a beat monster. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, there's times when I want to sample some some East Africa some stuff from Kenya and whatever, but yo, it doesn't bang that hard. Oh. Or there's times I want to bump to some stuff from Kenya, like the stuff outside, um, uh, your more commercialized stuff or, or, or your more youthful stuff. Dare I say it like that? Yeah, yeah. And I try to bump some of those. It's, it, 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 it's, it's not banging. There's, I don't know. If I, I'm not feeling the calypso. I, it's, I don't know what you guys call it, but I'm not feeling it that much. Yeah. Uh, but okay, okay, that's interesting. But mm. I think that at the end of the day, personally. This is coming from a personal perspective. I think that at the end of the day, there is a there is a link up that needs to happen. I mean, from from up from us, one of the, one of our one of our first modern day dare I say biggest experiences of East African music was Diamond Platinum. Okay, Platinum Diamonds, if I'm not wrong. Or, yeah, yeah, or Diamond Platinum, right? Yeah. And that motherfucker was cheesy as fuck, though. I won't lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. Yeah. We caught on, some of us had to catch on to him later. Well, wow, okay. You feel me? Yeah. You guys have a certain suave and whatever, whatever that we we just didn't get the side. Okay. Or the rest of Africa doesn't get. But yeah. what's most important is how do we take that suave and how do we take that, that, that unique sound and how do we branch it off into the rest of Africa? Okay. And how do we branch it off into the rest of the world? And once you stop looking at the rest of the world and what the rest of the world is doing, and you start actually incorporating sonics, not influence, in terms of just sonics. Yeah. Because my piano is just basically sonics. I mean, if you take, if you look at what, what made my piano great is the fact that some of these guys started realizing, yo, if you take that the, the sonics of dubstep mm. and you incorporate them into Kwaito, you're yeah. going to have a banging sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you take the sonics of trap and mm. you incorporate them into Kwaito, mm. you're going to have a banging sound. Um, mm. Okay. Almost is basically an interpretation of what trap was in terms of quiet, in terms of sonics, but in terms of feel, in terms of rhythm, in terms of what I don't think that East Africa is getting that much love in terms yeah. of what it is, hmm. and it's very and, and it's very important for you guys to be to be shown that much love or to or to give that much love because a huge portion of what Africa is speaking comes from your language, comes from Swahili. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know. So that sh that love has to come through. I don't. I I really don't. I've never really understood why we've never actually had East African music that bangs. So shit don't bang. you guys don't even fuck with Damon? Uh, he's I. Yeah. No, you're gonna get me in trouble, but no, 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 no. <laughs> I it's, think that's it's okay. The, it's okay. That's... No, that's one of the reasons why. That's one of the reasons why you you we hollering, but. Yeah, okay. he did a record with with AKA. Yeah. Mm. Now Costa yeah. Teach, they did. Uh, oh, there was this really good song. It was Costa Teach. Uh, some guy called Mboso. It's called Shetani. Shetani means the devil. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it's some dope shit. Like R.I.P. to Costa Teach, man. Died on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. died on stage. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. to Costa Teach. Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't hear me in that song, Costa Teach, Mboso. It's called Shetani. Ah, Shetani, I'm dun 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 dun. It it has that. It, it's the I'm a piano beat. Yeah. And it's really yeah. dope. 
No. What's funny is this is I think it's the same scenario, yeah, when we have uh and it's funny on Drinks Champ, uh Davido himself, he was like, Yo, man, South Africa's like America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's like how we'll have like an American artist do a record with a with an African artist or a South African artist, but the record is only recognized in, in Africa. Okay. Or yeah. in that country. You get what I mean? Yeah. I think it's the same scenario that side because there's times when I um I don't know what channel it is with you guys, but um Trace uh Sound City and then there's Trace Africa, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then I'll pick up and then I'll pick up on some stuff that's that's like dope from like um the rest of Africa. And I'm like, oh shit. Mm. That's fly, that's fly, that's fly. But I'm like, how come this shit is not mm. commercialized? Mm. Yeah. And it's because of regionalization and it's because of the people that that took back control of the um, of the music industry, which is like the majors. Yeah. They took control back of the music industry and they started gatekeeping what is and what isn't hot. Mm. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. They started hiring younger people who understood the market and who understood what people are doing and and trends. And they just took control back of the market because look at how we're not working together and how your sound is not bumping as much this side. Yeah. Where's that? I'm South African, but I grew up on Fela Kuti. How the fuck did that happen? Where's mm. that? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm an 86 baby. Well, I'm an 80s baby. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. How did I grow up on Fela Kuti? Well, so Fela Kuti used, yeah. to, used to be played there. No, nah, I'm just asking you. Like, oh. it's one of, you know, how, how, does, how does somebody like Fela Kuti or how does somebody like me mm. grow up on Fela Kuti? that grew up in a in a very like a, a huge portion of my life was when apartheid was still around yeah like the, the, my my beginning years but i've known fella kuti my entire life i cannot remember a time when i've never known fella kuti yeah yeah okay yeah okay. what i'm trying you, yeah. you do get where i'm at yeah so now in this day and age i still don't know a record that costa teach did with it with a dope artist from from oh, kenya from kenya okay because you know I mean? he did something we are with some Tanzanian artist. So now I gotta ask you, like, which Kenyan artist do you know? Like, right now, active Kenyan artists that you know. Why don't you ask me which Kenyan artists I got a record with? Um, Trabule. Yeah. Oh, I you have. Uh, oh, we Trabule. I've got yeah, like, good. if I'm not wrong, I've got like two records with Trabule. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait to release. I can, I can't. I I've, I know that he's got one that that I did a hook on. Yeah. And then I've got one that I produced that he gave me a beautiful verse on. It's him and Madlera Doboy. One of the uh, Madlera Doboy is going to be one of the biggest shining stars in terms of hip hop that's going to come out of Africa. Okay. You guys should be aware of him. Okay. Um, I miss that rough Kalamashaka. Uh, 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 it's, it's Kalamashaka, right? Yeah, yeah Kalamashaka. Yeah, yeah. it right. Yeah. I remember. I yeah. I remember that from from when I was growing up. I haven't listened bumped to it in a while. I remember. Yeah. Yo, man, I just knew that it was just dope. Mm. That's all. I, I could not understand what was happening, but all I knew was dope. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Who, who was it? There was, there was another guy. Uh, Rabbit. Something Rabbit. Freaking King hell. Kaka. There's King Rabbit. Kaka. Rabbit King yeah, Kaka. Yeah. Hey, Rabbit. Yes, King, Rabbit. Right? Yeah. He's, he did a song with uh, this guy with a double HP. Yeah. Yeah. That's as far, that, that's as far as I know. There needs to be a better exchange between SA and and, and, and Kenya. But but right and now, Germany. like so, like present day artists, you don't know. Like there's like the biggest. Group so who's in, okay? The who's big, banging? The biggest who's group. Who's banging? The biggest group in Kenya right now. They call Saudi Soul. You don't know about Saudi Soul? Oh, I think I know Saudi Soul. They are uh, a boy they, band. They, they sing, right? Yeah, they yeah, sing, they, they are boy sing. band. They're like yeah. yeah. Oh, they still banging? Yeah, they just did a tour. They did a tour in the US, Europe. Like they're touring, man. They're making that, you know, they're making that money. They still releasing records. How do we export like that swag out here, though? Yeah, that's that's the funny thing. That's why I um, because even when I look at their collaborations, they've done collabs with Nigeria, but not collabs with South Africa. I don't know why that is. So we have that, and then when it comes to rappers, we have Calligraph Jones. Of course, we've had Calligraph. Nah, man. You don't know Calligraph? Nah. That. Mm -hmm. That dude is a beast on the mic. Like that motherfucker is rough, right. man. Like he's good. Right. He's fucking. Well, one good. thing I loved. One one thing I loved about Kenya when I picked up as a kid and yeah. Again, thank God to Chad Low. Yeah. What you guys were doing was was freaking insane because we were picking up on you guys and the matatus and everything. Yeah. You know, am I saying it right? The Texas, the matatus and the culture yeah. and how you guys were bombing the matatus and everything and we're looking at. 
Lagos was wooed out. And then later <laughs> on, I met up with, and then later on, I met up with Akili. And then I saw y'all baby pictures. Yeah. And you guys were wearing jackets, bumper jackets, and you were wearing snow goggles, and you had them up here, <laughs> and they were yellow, and yeah. there was no sign of snow anywhere. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you, 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 Mookie and Akili and them, you guys are weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just, I think we just loved hip hop. You know, we loved hip hop a lot. So the funny he thing is, uh, the funny thing is, uh, there's this guy. Um, what's his name? Nasty C. Yeah, Nasty's n- n- Nasty's dog. Yeah. Nasty's so when Nasty dog. came to Kenya, I remember like everyone was asking, "Are you going to work with Calligraph?" Uh, so I thought you knew about Calligraph. Calligraph is like uh, right now he's he's the one rapper I'm mentioning because he still spits in English because most of the mm. like Kenyan rappers they spit in Shang. Yeah. So this do- dude is like dope in Shang, dope in English, dope. So I I thought you. But wait, what's English. Shang though? Is is is, is Shang what you guys were talking? You you and you and Thingy and them was talking? Yeah, yeah, Shang. You Shang and, is um, a, it's a street language, so it's uh, the S is from Swahili, then the N is from English. I don't know where the fuck the H is from. Ah, Maybe just it's, calling it's, it. It's, it's like it's like Twinglish. Our side is Twinglish. It's a it's, it's a mixture of Swan and English. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same shit. Yeah. So we mixed we mixed yeah, them there's up. There's some people that, that use it that use that term, but there's others that don't. Yeah. But he, oh, where he's dope. Yeah. So, so right, let's make that collab happen. Yeah, yeah, so you, you you just 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 check like after this shit, just go check Calligraph Jones and and then see, like uh, Wait, check, check out check out Calligraph Jones there for us as soon as we're done with this. I'm sorry, my nephew's in here. He's excited about this because no. he knows I hardly do interviews. Yeah, yeah. So he's yeah. I I I, I hardly do this. Okay, at, okay. Like literally at all. I'm, yeah, but, I'm I'm too. I I shoot too much from the hip. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is good. So like the street language is called what? Do you have a name or you just call it Swinglish? No, 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 no. There's, there's way too many languages out here for us to actually have one name. Look, there's one name which is like dying out. It's called Tsotsi Dal. Tsotsi Dal means like Tsotsi is like uh, is, is 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 a South African term for dog. Yeah. Right. Mm. And then Dal is an Afrikaans word for language. So, so it's dog language. Oh, okay. You but guys honestly are... speaking, yeah. Just being two It, it helps huh? us. Huh? Tupac, eh? West Coast, West Coast, tag. <laughs> you went tag there, language, you went, eh? <laughs> you went there. Look for for us this side. It's it's our Swahili. Okay. Toti Dal is 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 the homeboy Swahili. Eta eta. Whether you Zulu and Kosa and what and what eta ola fili away. You know those sort of things. Okay. It helps us out. You get what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. certain words that helps help you get away. You know what I mean? Eta fili to eta ah whatever whatever. It just helps us out on the streets. You okay. know what I mean? Regardless yeah. of what language you're speaking. But the in-betweens might just, uh, you yeah. know? Yeah. But other than that, that's the only thing that we do have. Oh, okay. I can't wait. I can't, I can't wait for us to jump into politics because I want to find out a lot of things about 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 Kenyan politics oh, yeah. right now. Oh, yeah, that's that's that's. Good, I good. don't know. You've calmed down, Doug. I thought that I thought that you were gonna be on volume one hundred if you get on podcasts. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm just. I'm just. You know, like we're getting there. So the next thing I needed to ask you is, uh, what's Mfuetu? Because I think Mfuetu is what we say. Say so in Kenya, I like in Shang. Uh, in Shang, they, they, there's two words. Eh? There's mze. Mm. Mze means old mm. man. But now in yeah. Shang, we say mse. We, we replace That's the Z word. with the S. Mm. So with mse is, uh, check you mse, yeah. like check this guy out. Yeah. Mse is yeah. like mse this tu, guy. Yeah, mse tu comes from a Zulu word, mfowe tu, mm. my brother. Oh, Okay. And then it was just like hyphen, like it's it's like how it's like how people went motherfucker and then they went motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. There's a difference between a motherfucker and a motherfucker. Mm, mm. So there's a difference between mfue to and fate. Oh, okay. It's just that high. Yeah. So okay. it's my brother. Oh, cause yeah. That, now you know what mtue to in Swahili means. Mtue to. Uh huh. Mtue to is my person. Yeah. Or our person. Yeah. Mtue to our yeah. person. There's a lot of. There's, 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 there's a lot of, like I'm saying that a huge portion of, of your language yeah. of Swahili, um, is used with us. Like for example, uh, do means, mla- it's Mlango, right? Yeah, Mlango, yeah. Yeah, that's Mnyako. Oh, Mnyako. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Funga. Funga. That's open, right? Uh, funga yeah. is closed. Mula. 
It's closed. Yeah. Okay, Fungua. Fungua is open. Sharp. Uh, for us, it's 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 almost similar because it's Bula. Funga Bula. It, there's there's some simili- similarities. Yeah. yeah the song. Although I hear I hear although I hear that side there's there's guys who have a surname called Marete. Is that they have something called? Uh, th- there's guys that have a surname called Marete. Okay, that one I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know. Achille, Achille, <laughs> oh, that, that used to flip Achille out because that is some, that's not sick for us. But <laughs> mm, <laughs> yeah, mm. but like there's there's so much similarities in the language. Yeah, there's so many similarities and like, dude, like um, Moana. You if if I say Moana for you, it sounds like Moana. child, right? Yeah, Moana child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Muntu. Muntu is Muntu. Yeah, person. Yeah, that's Muntu. Yes. Umuntu. So even this side it still breaks down into so many into so many layers but then as far as I got and I hope that this is gone from you guys like there were so many there were so many there was so much tribal war and tribal classing. Yeah. That it was very difficult for people to actually engage in that like if you can just break that part of of society down. Yeah. Like with Kenya because I never really got that. Uh, Muki tried to break it down to me. Akili tried to break it down to me, but it's, Bre- it feels Bre- like it's a touchy subject for for, for Kenyans to break no. down. Bre- break down what? I'll break it down for you. That's the, now that's the Muki. I know. Yeah. That, that, sorry, that's the Mwafa. I know. That's the Mwafa. I know. Let's go. Let's jump into it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so, what is it with this um, with the tribal wars and the fact that you guys? Okay, job bless that you guys have one common language that you guys can speak, which yeah. is Swahili. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then why is it weird that you'll find somebody speaking a different tribal language? And how did that work out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you'd have to go back to how African nations were formed, even South Africa, I'm guessing. You know, like it's like Kenya was formed because of the British. Without the British we will not have the Kenya we have right now. You understand? Like, we mm-hmm. were not a country, and then the white man came in. The white man came in, and there was no country, and they just broke it down. So, with Kenya, it was a, it, it was a company called the British East African Company. B-E-A-C. Okay, we had the Dutch East India Company. Yes. So, the British East African Company, they're the ones who decided to divide Africa. Yeah, like, mm. not Africa, like this part of East Africa. So, they were like, Kenya mm. starts from here, ends here. Uganda starts from here, ends here. Tanzania starts from here, ends here. So, even, like, the most mm. interesting thing is the way the British East African Company had originally, like, drawn uh, Uganda. Uganda was supposed mm. to come till a certain place in Kenya called Naivasha. That's where Uganda was supposed mm. to end. So, even when that, mm. I don't know if you know that, um, this dictatorial motherfucker called Idi Amin. Oh, I know Idi Amin. Like, yeah. We all know yeah. When, when that motherfucker came in, he was like, yo, Uganda ends in Naivasha. And then Kenyatta was like, yo, if you want to fuck, let's fuck, man. <laughs> and then he was like, no, no <laughs> we, we can't do this. So I, I was yeah. taking you there just to show you that this country didn't come. It's not a country that was formed because people loved each other and they were like, we have something in common. Let's come together. Wow. So ah. I, I, I think this would even be the case with South Africa. I don't know. But let me now, now let yeah. me break down. Uh, Kenya. So, the fact that these tribes were forced into being a nation by the mm. British, it's going to take some time for the country to come together. And then you have to look at it this way. Ooh. Now, when you go back, you have the first president who's called uh, Jomo Kenyatta. Jomo mm-hmm. Kenyatta, the one that you read in the history books, is this freedom fighter, this good, nice guy. That's what you read, yeah? Mm-hmm. So he That's had, what we understand. Yeah. yeah, so he had his nice side, but he was also uh, he was a thief, man. This dude like stole land, like so much land. He o- owns like half the country. Shit, like he owns a lot of land, like a lot of okay. good. He just land. owns a lot. Okay. Yeah, he just used to. Uh, they they used to say that he'd he'd sleep, like when he was being driven around as a president, he'd sleep, and then he'd say, "My land starts here." Then someone had to write down, and then when he woke up, it'd be like, "And it ends here." So he ended up with a lot of land, and then when the second guy came in, called Kenyatta, because you see. Uh, no, not called, when Kenyatta died, Kenyatta died, I think, in his sleep. Then this other guy called Moi took over. And when Moi took over, yeah. um, uh, people say that he started out well, but then, so, so Kenyatta is Kikuyu. Kenyatta was Kikuyu, yeah? Yes, that's what I was trying to, that's what I was trying to find out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me break it down. So, Kenyatta was Kikuyu. Even his real mm. name was not Kenyatta. His real name was Kamau Wangengi. Kamau Wangengi. But this motherfucker knew 
he he like he owned the country so much that he changed his name he fit the the country into his name changed his switch his whole shit up like an artist so that was not his name <laughs> okay nyata yeah. oh so those like that's not his name like kenyata is not his name his name was our uh, kamau and gengi yes so when kamau so and gengi where does jomo where, where does jomo come from yeah he just pulled that shit out of his ass and you know he just <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and it's, it's he was ahead of his time. Yeah, he he he, he hey man. Yeah, he gave himself he his a, own he, name. He pulled a Jamie Fox on us. Yeah, 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 he pulled a Jamie Fox on us. We don't even know what Jamie's real name is. That's that's how much we used to him as Jamie Fox. So uh so now when Kenyatta died, so Kenyatta died. Kiku, he was Kikuyu. Yeah, he was Kikuyu. So Kikuyu is the Kiki, biggest yeah, Kikuyu. Yes, the biggest tribe in Kenya. What's the biggest tribe in SA? Uh they say it's Zulu. Okay. So, Amazulu. Yes, is Amazon. So Kikuyu is like the Zulu of Kenya, yeah? So now mm-hmm. he uh he dies in his sleep and when he dies in his sleep his vice president was a Kalenjin. Okay? Okay. So um since his vice president was a Kalenjin, the Kikuyus around Kenyatta didn't want this Kalenjin guy to, to, to take over. But wow. somehow they ended up letting him take over the power. And when he came into power He also did the same shit as Kenyatta. He just stole, stole, stole. People say he was good for four years. So he was good from 1978 to 82. Then in 82, there was an attempted coup. So this attempted coup mm. was uh, initiated by some dudes. Like the li- the ringleader was a Luo. So now we have this other tribe called Luo. So you see now we have Moi who's a Kalenjin. Remember? Remember that name? Yeah. Kalenjin? So Kalenjin, no. that's an ilotic language. You see like the N. So Kalenjin it's a nilotic language and then you have Luo that's also nilotic. But now with the Luo's mm. also the the thing that I've skipped is originally when Kenya got its its independence you had uh, the vice president was a guy called Jaramogi Oginga. This Jaramogi Oginga is the dad of Raila Odinga because I know you, you know about some guy called Raila. Odinga isn't yeah because I was like yo that's that's the name sounds familiar isn't it like the current president or some? No no he's uh he used to be a prime minister uh but but he's not. He's always running for president never gets that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so <Okay>. but <laughs> now let's let, let's go back to so this guy called Jaramogi Oginga appar- apparently or allegedly when Kenyatta was in prison he was given the chance to be the president and he was like I can't be president till this other guy is released and when this other guy was released and he just came out and he was just taking all this shit just grabbing land grabbing what this guy was there trying to stop him and then they you know ended up fighting this guy dropped out so when he dropped out he started an opposition party i think it was called KPU Kenya People's Union or some shit uh, I'd, i'd have to remember the name so With this now the Luos are always known for being part of the opposition. So that tagline stayed. Even his son is known ab- about being part of the opposition. Like, now, it's like the IF, it's like the IFP and the Zulus out here. Yeah, yeah. It's literally like the IFP is a, is, is a Zulu party literally. Okay. okay. Like it's hard to find anybody. I'm in the northwest, the IFP is in the KZN. Mm. It's hard to find anybody this side who is IFP like nothing. Oh, okay. That don't have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but that's how I'd break it down. But I I'd, I'd go back to the fact that the countries didn't start as a result of us wanting to create a nation. It was the white man who came and said Kenya starts here ends here. So even you have like the northeastern province of Kenya, it's called uh, we have the Garissa and the Mandera. So with them mm. they they wanted to be part of Somalia because you know they are Somalis. Mm. Like you yeah. know Somalis, eh? So the, but, but dude, yeah, dude, dude. Yeah. There's Somalis everywhere in the hood. Yeah, yeah. So now them yeah, they wanted yeah. to be Like now the northeastern part of Kenya wanted to be Somalis, uh, part of Somalia. They were told no, you're part of this country called Kenya. Then when they come to Kenya they're treated as less Kenyan, you see. Yeah. So you have all this shit. So now you have a nation that can never really unite. Um but you know like they say everything that has a beginning has an end. So one day I'm thinking maybe one leader is going to come even from these two major tribes one or oh, oh, big tribes is going to come that's going to do a different way where you appoint the best of the best in government positions because like right now the women been the joke because the guy who came in as I was telling you um he's called Ruto he appointed like he had to uh thank the kikuyus so he appointed uh like many kikuyus but he appointed much 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 more like many many kalenjins and people started joking that if you are 
if you are applying for a government job you need to say yamune yamune is how the kalenjin say hi to each other yeah. so it's like instead of dear sir you write yamune and then you put your application there <laughs> and then you stand a chance so that's how bad the tribal politics in kenya is but now i want to know so south africa there is no like even tribal appointments it's just you are appointed mostly uh, on merit it's, pro- it's 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 provincial to a certain extent um what they'll do here is <clears throat> look depending on which region of south africa you're in just give me a second yeah depending on which region of south africa that you're in it's cold here man i have to tuck in i have to do what i have to change position and all that shit dog. i know i so, know man but you you got put on a, a sweater or something man i see you just in a t-shirt hey man hey, hey, hey man so anyway yeah so, um in south africa it's more provincial than anything Okay. But depending on which province you're in, it will be a certain language. Like for example, the northwest um it con- is considered a Botswana mm. province. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or a Sibana province. Uh you'll find that um the free state is considered a Sosotho province. Yeah. Because most people that are there speak Sosotho. You will find that Limpopo is where now you start having vendor and Pedi. Okay. Right? And then you'll find that Pumalanga, that's where the Swatis are. Mm. You know, you'll find that Eastern Cape is where the Kosas are. Mm. You'll find that Western Cape is thing. Okay, so here's the Tswana and the and the Africana and the uh okay, but the, Africana in terms of like um your internet the colors. Your internet has started freezing, man. Like that's so painful. Okay. Let, let let's uh let's start from the point you're talking about Mpalanga. Oh, Mpumalanga. Mpumalanga, yes. Yes, so Mpumalanga is a is is a Swati, but anyway, either way, but what will happen is um I'll be I'll be in the northwest, right? Somebody like me grew up in the northwest, but my neighbor's Tosa. Okay. And another Zulu and another Swati, you know, we're all from different whatever, but we speak a common language, which is it was a Sotho Swana type thing, especially in my area here because I'm closer to the free state. Yes. We speak a hybrid of Sotho and Swana. So <clears throat> what you'll find is they'll have a problem with the fact that there's somebody from Venda who came here and mm. he is a vendor. Yeah. Uh or he is he is a mo vendor. Yeah. And and he speaks Chivenda. Yeah. And he'll come here and he'll come work in the northwest at a government office or he'll come and work at a high position. It's like, nah, man, there's a lot of people here that can do that within the province. Hey, 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 hey whatever oh. the case may be. Okay. okay. That's just basically the gist of it. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of guys don't stray too far from where their original home province are. Because, like oh, for example, okay. me, mm. I'm not about to leave here and go to the municipality up in KZN and think that I'm gonna do some changes there. I'm gonna get fucking shot. Those Zulus don't play. Yo, you feel you, me? You're in which province, you? I'm in the northwest. I'm a, yo, yeah, I'm I'm platinum province as a motherfucker, dog. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah. Um. So so now with that being said, what I'll tell you is, um. Uh, or, or, or the one question that I had was this. Yeah. Uh, what about the tender process there? Do you guys have a tender process? Yeah, yeah, we have a tender. tender so, so, so we have something. So how does that work out? We, ha- we have the same shit. It, it's it, called, it, we call them tenderpreneurs, yeah? So tenderpreneurs. We got are, the same shit too. Yeah, so so here it's mostly based on tribe also. Like if, if you're in the right tribe, the probability of getting a tender is super high. Because, you know, if you're like in the tribe that's in the government. and uh, That's why like even if you come to Kenya, you can is this national well. or regional? No, it's it's still okay. Now we have the national cake and then we have the regional. Because now we broke the country into forty-seven counties. So these forty-seven yeah. counties, of course, are now tribal based. Which there's nothing wrong with that, you know, because like this is the majority tribe. It's like ninety percent, ninety-nine percent. So that's okay. That that one I wouldn't. You expect yeah if it's, if it's a, a a luo county you expect the luos to get the the contracts if yeah. it's a kikuyu county but now i was talking yeah. about the national government with the national government it's it's more about uh which which tribe are you from you'll get the big tenders mm. the big what and that's why now getting into power becomes this one thing that everyone fights for because you know there are positions that i can never get unless my tribe is in power you understand like the no, minister, that's fuck. That, that's, minister that's for weird. finance minister for finance uh you can never get if you're president uh, your your tribe is not in power 
uh, the, the what else? Uh, Minister for Finance and um, and uh, the Central Bank Governor, for example. Those ones have been like since Kenya started, they've just been bouncing around two tribes. You see, so now. Okay, so who's running? Wait, here's a very interesting question. Yeah. Who's running the jails and who are the most niggas in jail? That's the funny thing about it. Like, if you asked anyone, they'd say it's the Kikuyus, but that would be basically because of the population. Like, the fact that, that are they're running the jails or that are in the jails? That they're in the jails. And that would be. But if it's because of the Kikuyus, it would be because of one thing. They're the ones in the major cities. So you understand? Like, the, if you're the majority in a uh, major city, you're man. bound to fuck up more. And apart from that, also politically, remember, as I told you, like, if, if we yeah. go back in time, Political prisoners would mostly be Kikuyu. Then after Kikuyu, you'd yeah. have Luo and then the other tribes. You understand? So uh, with jails, I wouldn't say there's a major... If I was to take a guess, I'd say the Kikuyus would be number one. And that would be because of population. It makes sense. Like I'm assuming even in South Africa, the Zulus, because they're the majority, would make up a bigger chunk of the jail system. Or I wouldn't say that. Uh... Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I but but, but I that. said like, with the jail thing, I'm here. not sure. With the jail thing, I'm not out, sure. Here. out here they have a out here they have a a, a there's a jail system run by the, the, the prisoners. Yeah. Um not that the prisoners are in control, but there is a number system, a, 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 a numbers gang system. Mm. It's, 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 it's it's either you're 26, it's either it's either your uh, your rough four, mm. your 26, your 20 uh, 27, 28, or your big five. Yo, okay. You feel me? Yeah. So, but a huge portion of those languages is 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 Zulu. There's there's Afrikaans. There's what? Look, there's a blend. It's also just as much as Fanakalo. Fanakalo is a beautiful language, but it is literally the most basic language ever okay. because Fanakalo is a mind language. Yeah. Right. Fine. So we can't say that. Getting back to, to, to the whole numbers, the, we, we, we can't say that the Zulus are more, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. That is okay. not really like how I'd say it, because... Uh, yeah, that, that's so why I that's, told you, like, is, even with Kenya, I, I wouldn't know, like... But if you put a gun to my head, I'd say because of the population, I'd say I'd expect the Kikuyus to be the most. After the Kikuyus, funny enough, I think it's the Luos, because... The Luos, because of always protesting and what? Because now the Kalenjins, they infiltrated because of the... What do you mean the Luos because of prote protesting? Are they going to jail for protests? Yeah, yeah you, you can go get shot, go to jail, all that shit. Uh, but now, I, I wanted to, to tell you something. The Kalenjins, when Moi was in power for 24 years, he made sure there was a lot of Kalenjin cops and Kalenjin soldiers. You understand? Like in the military. So even like the universal cop accent in Kenya... When people are making jokes about cops, they use the Kalenjin accent. Because that's the reason. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, during yeah, Moi's yeah. time, after, because there was an attempted coup in 1982. Uh, so he had to I get people that, yeah. people that he trusts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't think our jails are like your jails. Our jails, you know, like, Kenya, we don't, the minute you go to jail, you're looked down upon. Like, no one admires you. You're just taken as the scum. And that's one of the things I love about Kenya. Like, if you're a criminal, no one looks up to you. You understand? Like the way you'll have maybe in a place like America, you can be like, I'm a thug, I'm what? Kenya's like, fuck you, man. We'll ban you. We'll, we'll just, we'll, you know, we don't, we don't respect thieves. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that this side. I'm, tr I'm trying to think because I'm, what, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to say, how is it that side? Yeah. Is it glorified? Yeah. I do you glorify thugs. Like, cause here, if you're caught as a thug. Mm. Look, man. I think it's the it's the sub. I think we've managed to brand certain things as well as the Americans did. Okay. In a certain way, you feel me? Yeah. Um. Even our gangster shit. Like for example, me. I won't lie. I'm not the hottest motherfucker out there, but I've got I'm, I, 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 I've got my toes in the streets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the music that I make is um is strat and strat is just literally. Um, what Kwaito if if Kwaito gave birth to my piano, yeah. Motswako, which is South African hip hop from yeah. where I'm from, yeah, I'm I'm we are the second baby from Motswako. Okay, okay. Motswako gave birth to Strata, but we just the gangster version of it. Yeah, 
You feel me? Because yeah. of where I'm from and where where, where Strata was born. Mm-hmm. And Strata just literally means street. Yeah. But um do we do we glorify it? Uh, we see it, we like hey, yo, you know, uh, the media might look down upon it. The public does look down upon it, but yeah. there's a certain level of it where we like, yeah. You know, mm, mm, mm. because, you know, you got your Robin Hoods and there are some guys out there that will make it look fly and whatever the case may be. Like, let's not bullshit. I think the one thing that, that people really look down upon badly this side yeah. is because it's a huge problem is 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 drug dealing and like uh, uh, um, drug taking. OK, that right now we're really looking down upon because it's a huge problem this side. It's a yeah. very, very huge problem. Yeah. One thing I wanted to know is what are your drug policies that side? Because uh, we've we got a huge problem of foreigners that are bringing in drugs and whatever. And I've heard, I've heard your president, uh, your, 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 your your former president, if I'm not wrong, uh, what was his name? Um, Uhuru, Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru. K- yeah, Uhuru K- Kenyatta K- is uh, Nani's son, Jomo's son, man. Like, so we yeah. already had a father and son president, man. Yeah. yeah, but I used to love his stance on 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 a lot of. Uh, 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 what foreigners can do in your country and cannot do in your country. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. foreigners should be doing when they are allowed that's into the, your country. That's the funny thing. Like, if the only foreigners that you'll hear Kenyans talk shit about are the Nigerians. And with the Nigerians, we never talk about you drugs. Need to, you need, I think that we need to have a podcast with yeah. somebody from South Africa, yeah. somebody from Kenya, and yeah. somebody from Nigeria. Yes. Because this side, the Nigerians are obviously the drug dealers, the scammers, and the guys with the weird churches. I don't know how it is with you. Yeah. So with us, they're the scammers, but not drugs. When it comes to the drug okay. dealing, the drug dealing happens in Mombasa, and it's mostly just Mombasa natives that are known for that shit. So it's just people born in uh, Mombasa, like the drug barons and what, they're more of, uh, I'd say, Asian stroke Arab. What do you mean? Oh, Asian that's a dream Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but the Nigerians here, they're known for scamming. Like, even there was this really sad story of a Kenyan girl who was dating a Nigerian, and they were both mm. killed, and they were put, like, inside, like, sacks. You know, like, they were stuffed inside sacks. So the, the story was that the Nigerian was a scammer. So we know them for scamming. You know, we know them for that uh, uh, hash puppy-ish. But we don't yeah, know... Yeah, hash puppy, yeah, hash puppy yeah. shit, yeah. But we don't know yeah. them for drugs. Like I'd I'll be lying to say that I've had like Nigerians being drug dealers is an issue in mm. Kenya. No. I'd say that is just so I think that's like a South African Nigerian problem. But with I, that, I'll, 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 I'll tell you Yeah. I'll I'll tell you this. Uh first of all, yes, I know a lot of Nigerian drug dealers. Mm. And yes, I know a lot of Nigerians that are not drug dealers. Yeah. I won't bullshit you. Nah? Mm. But a huge popula- a, 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 a huge number of um, of cases where people are being busted, drug rings are being busted, it's Nigerians. Okay. When it comes to scamming, a huge number of people that are being caught for scamming, this and that, this and that, 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 it's Nigerians. Mm. When it comes to like some of these fraudulent churches, blah, 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 it's a Nigerian church and it's it's a Nigerian yeah. pastor and they're being fouled. Okay. When okay. it comes to you know what I mean? Yeah. About when it comes to like uh cash in transit heists, mm. that's we're talking Mozambicans, we're talking guys oh, from okay. the no, no not, not guys from the so we're talking guys from uh Zimbabwe, yeah, you know, and a lot of a huge portion of them are South Africans. Okay. Let me let me not take that. When it comes to the cash heist, and, mm. and I was freaked out by the fact that you said you guys don't yeah, have cash we, in transit. We we don't have How? that. We don't have that because this I'll 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 break it down two ways. When I see Nigeria, when I see South African thugs, I say those are real thugs. When I see Kenyan thugs, they're not really real thugs. Kenyan thugs are the sort of people to terrorize people who are unarmed. You know, like if you're ah. unarmed, they'll terrorize yeah. you. As soon as they see a gun from the police, they're running. You know, that's why they get shot with their hands up, etc. Mm. With yours. I see you hold court in the streets. There's exchange. I I saw a certain yeah. video that was going around of like a South African just walked through two cops and just they, they just killed them and took their guns. We don't do that here. So now with the cash transit, now the cash trucks, they have policemen and these policemen have guns. 
Kenyan thugs don't love mm. people with guns. They love robbing women. They love robbing unarmed men. Mm. So of course they Excuse won't me. try that shit. So that's that's the yeah. reason. So I'd say like your thugs are real thugs. Like I even fear your 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 ish. Like now nah, they bring them down. Yeah, nah, they bring them. Look, so, look. I I I I don't want to say I I don't want to put South Africa in a bad light, but I'll be real with you. They bring them down. Yeah, they yeah. bring them down. Then a motherfucker out here. Yeah, you feel me? Mm. But now our biggest problem is um is illegal mining. Okay. Because it comes with the guys from Lesotho, and those yeah. motherfuckers are not playing. Oh. And I know I've got a couple of brothers from Lesotho that are gonna hate me from this, for mm. this, or, or or because of this. But the truth is, a huge portion of the of the of of of, of the illegal mining that's been done in this country, mm. you look into it, and it's guys from Lesotho. And oh. when you look back into, and, and when you go a step a step uh, a step back uh, back uh, uh, further. You find that the guys that are helping them clean out the gold are guys from Zimbabwe. Wow. Oh, okay. So the gold leaves our country from the guys from Lesotho mm. and it goes to Zimbabwe, just like we saw with all the gold from Zimbabwe is heading to Dubai. Oh, okay. Okay. That's literally what's been happening right now. But in terms of how violent the country is, eh, yeah, it's not until you leave the country that you come back and you're like South Africa's. Oh, so we lost, we lost the connection, and then you came back. Yeah, um, I think I have like five minutes left. Oh, but damn, load shedding again. Oh, load shedding. shedding again. Damn, yeah. man, we have to have this conversation again, man, because we are just getting into it, man. Like, oh, dude, dude, yeah, I we're was. Just, we're yeah. just getting into it. So, uh, like, yeah. can you break that down for Kenyans? Because Kenyans will be like, what? What? What's load shedding? Okay, so the in in short, the capacity, the the, the the electric capacity of the country and some of the facilities that we've had in the country have not been maintained for a very long, have not been well maintained for a long time. Yeah, and some of the new plants that were going to be built mm. to sustain the country, they were not built in time, and most of them, everything went look. Everything went wrong with building the new facilities and the new plants. Okay. And now the the country is suffering from all of these things. Apart from all of that, there's also a problem of um, the coal that's being used mm. to actually power up these uh, the, these these things. It, it's been swapped by cartels and whatever and mafias, and the A grade coal is being switched for the bullshit coal. Okay. So we get nonsense coal. So now load shedding is just basically what happens in the country is. You'll get electricity from one hour to a certain hour, mm. and then it will be gone from that hour for to another hour. So we have it in different stages. There's stage four, stage six, stage whatever. Stage six is when it's a, it, which is when it goes off for like four um a period of four hours, yeah. and then it comes back for like two, three, four, whatever, whatever, and then it's gonna go back again for four hours. So right now we're in stage four, if I'm not wrong, it's gonna yeah. be gone for like two hours again. Okay, because the funny thing about Kenya is we used to have this in the 90s. It was called power rationing, but we did it differently. So our power rationing used to happen during the day because they knew at night you need your power. So, yeah, like during the day, like residential areas, the power would be out, I think, from around 6 to 6. Mm. Yeah? And then you'd have it 6 to 6. So U.S. is weird because no, you can't even do something, man, because they need to. No, no, no. Yeah. They just need to fix it. They just need to fix it because the capacity is there. The biggest problem has been the fact that mm. there's a lot of people that have been in positions of power that have actually slept on it. Mm. And we are now actually finding out some of the biggest problems that have come that 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 have come from that situation. So I'm sure the rich have solar. Yeah, everybody has solar. Some people have generators. My neighbors yeah. and them have generators, but the prices have sky have gone yeah, yeah, have yeah. gone through the roof. You know, oh. power converters and whatever. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Um, they are trying to, they are trying to privatize electricity. Yeah. Even, and a lot of people are like, nah. Even in Kenya, they're trying to do that. Yeah, because it's a, it's, it's 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 a basic human right. Yeah. Yeah, it's here we consider it a basic human right. It's like water and it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's like water and health. It's, it's mm -hmm. a basic mm -hmm. human right. Mm -hmm. You know, but. Again, it's South Africa. Yeah, it's not really it's not really that bad until you leave South Africa and you realize ah, we're a good country. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
you know, and the problem is you'll get people that are gaslighting a lot of South Africans that have never left South Africa. One of the okay. biggest problems about a lot of South Africans is the fact that we don't travel. Yeah, yeah. The that, other day I was... Yeah? Oh, I don't know. The other day? Is finished? The other day I, I was I was with a bunch of friends and we realized that uh, there was like four, four or five of our homies that we were with mm. that have not left the hood within like two or three years. Oh, okay. The only time they left the hood was probably to go to court mm. and then they go back to the hood. They don't do anything in town. Mm. They don't do anything outside of the city. They don't do anything outside of the province. Mm. They don't do anything. You get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So those are the people that, uh, people th- th- that, uh, 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 media that is targeted at certain political views and p- political agendas okay. is targeting and gaslighting and putting fear into the mayor. There's a, uh, you feel me? Okay. The minute you leave South Africa, you start realizing we actually have a beautiful and wonderful um, democracy. And it's a really beautiful country that is very stable, but there's a lot more that can be done better. Okay. It's the same thing that you're saying, how the minute you can detach tribal politics from politics, yeah, you know what I mean, or tribalism from politics, yeah. your country will be one of the wealthiest countries yeah, in Africa. Yeah, yeah. Kenya would be the one same of the wealthiest. Thing is yeah. like if, mm. if the current government could let go of a lot of people or actually if young people could let go of this current government and say, you know what, you people need to go on, on your retirement and we are done with the ANC. We need to give another, uh, uh, other people a chance. Um, something different needs to happen. That's when we start realizing that there's a change. I mean, for me personally, when I'm listening to you, I'm like, fuck it, man. The only thing they can change that is the youth. You guys need a 1976 uprising in your country. Nah, nah I don't think it's going to happen because a lot of Kenyan youth are just dumb. Like the minute you dangle, try, try. Don't say that. Yeah, don't uh, say that. The, the don't minute, say that. Nah, nah, listen to uh, this... podcast, but they're used to you. Yeah, they're yeah, used no, no, to no. Yeah, they're commercial, they're used to that. Commercial I, media no more. Because I wanted to break it down. Like I also also wanted to point something out. Like another thing with Kenya is, do you know Kenya is the easiest place to start a business as a foreigner? Like in Kenya, let's say you move into my neighborhood and you start a shop. We don't give a fuck where you're from. That's now the most interesting thing about us. Like uh, foreigners, thing, especially. Yeah. Like here, you are bound to be attacked more if you're from another tribe during the electoral period than a South African. Like you, you could go to any place in Kenya, start a shop. Even if the shop kills the local shops, no one will talk about you as a foreigner. That's just one thing. That we have that it's beautiful oh, about man, this that's country. Different. That's that's a bit different out here. Yeah, because you Although, guys with the xenophobia shit, man. <laughs> that shit don't play, man. <laughs> I always hear quera quera. I'm like, oh shit, we don't have that quera quera shit here, man. So that, that's a beautiful no, thing about no, Kenya. No, you, you know, you guys do that on the Somalis, but I'll say this. No, no, we don't. We so, don't even do with them. With them, they harass more by the police. The police yeah. fuck with them, not not the with, civilians. With us, with us, we have. And it was very interesting. We had all of imagine this all of a Sunday, all of a sudden, yeah, there's just foreign nationals in your hood that just have shops. It was like, yeah, okay, mm. but how did these guys get here? Yeah, right, okay, sure. Mm. And then you start realizing, oh, wait, there's more of these shops, there's more of these shops, and then there's less South African, and I'm not talking like. I'm not talking like your big shops, your pick and pay or whatever, you know, yeah, your spy yeah. or whatever. No, no. Mm. I'm talking your basic businesses that are in the hood that are making sure that kids are going to school. Yeah, yeah. Things are paid. There's no poverty, blah, blah. Yeah. Your basic, mm, you know, mm, mm. little hole in the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. They killed that. They killed get to economy. Mm. Like right now as a South African, I have a better chance. If, if I get any form of funding, I might as well go open up a tavern or a car wash as a young man in the hood. That's that's the funny thing about us. Like I don't know how we approach business, but and that no, but is check, never... what these guys did was this. This it was with Pakistan, it was with Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. Yeah, and then the next thing we found out that they needed, they they, they were seeking asylum. Mm. And then when the Guptas left the country, all of a sudden all the ba- Bangladeshis and Pakistanis left. There's just a few of them now. Oh, okay. But then they sold their shops to the Somalis. Okay. And the Somalis are trading and making business in the exact same way. Mm. Like, dude, right now, if I leave mm. in the hood, I'm still trying to figure out. Not even, not even if 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 I leave or try to figure out. But if 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 I leave my house in the morning, 
mm. I need to figure out which Somali I'm going to buy from. Okay. And that's what it's I'm telling you like in Kenya that's not an issue man like we don't care. I, I don't know how if that helps us or it doesn't help us but we actually don't care who owns the shop as long we as we don't know how these we don't know how these people got here. And then another thing about us is I think it's because we are a refugee country. We have a lot of refugees from Congo, uh, from mostly Somalia. So now we have like yes. there's a place called Isli. Isli is like little Somali. If Isli was mm. in was in America it would be called little Somalia. Yes? Yeah. So you have think, Isli yeah. and then you have the Sudanese, the South Sudanese. Mm. You have now yeah. the Congolese. You have So I think we've come to accept that we are a refugee country. So when someone we never care about the country someone is from. So remember the way we are tribal when it comes to government? Yeah. Now we don't care about the foreigners. Like if a Kenyan heard that 10,000 South Africans are moving in without visas, they wouldn't give a fuck. They'd be like, like, "Ah, you come to make you, you came to make money, just make your shit. Let me. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to do my shit." That's just the Kenyan thing. Like I think we are a refugee country. You guys are not. You're not a refugee no, country. No, we, we don't have this. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. have a history of that. We have yeah, a history yeah. of running from here. Yeah, yeah. We so, have a history of running from here. Yeah, yeah. Now. So I think that's that's that, that that's the that's one like one of our major differences, yeah. You know what's crazy? You're supposed to be, are you supposed to be interviewing me? I'm here with me to interview no, you. No, 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 no. But I guess it's like, like it's good because because what, what I wanted to do this podcast was to get that uh like African view on stuff. Let me, and that's why let, I feel like we just started question. the conversation, man. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. But I have nothing to lose. Um, yeah. What is the stance of the average Kenyan mm. politically yeah. on the new law that's just been passed in Uganda um, oh. in regards with the LGBTQ? Or if, if we can't touch on that, we don't no, no, have to no, no, touch no. on that. You, we can, just can, Kenya, Kenya is just like, I don't know if you guys are like us, but Kenya, we don't have a malema. Like Kenya, the stance is we are very homophobic. You know, like, so... No, no, we are not. Yeah, yes, that's what I'm saying. Like we don't have a Malema because we see with Malema, he was like, hey, "These guys have rights." Uh, Kenya, we are super homophobic. I just think that the only reason why we have not passed that in Parliament is because of one, two, three things. Maybe we need favors Human from rights, the West. Yeah. We yeah, need yeah. favors from the West. But here, yeah, we, we are we are we are super homophobic. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't say we are different from Uganda. It's just that we don't right now. The opposition is on the government's ass talking about the cost of living so much that there is no time mm. to... Even if you brought up the LGBTQ thing, you'd be told to shut the fuck up. People want the cost of living to go down. So I think with some things, we know how to prioritize. Remember, like, there is a way... Even a time Uhuru was asked and he was like, I don't care about yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, man, get the fuck out here with that shit. Like, yeah, let's this just is talk how about... we are. Please respect that. Yeah. 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 I remember this. I remember... I, I keep watching it. Oh, I, I, I kept watching it a few times when, when, when I was looking at how... Uh, online, mm. it was a compilation of how much it. There was one though where it was on the Ugandan thing. I think that 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 journalist was out of line. Yeah, yeah. Why are you gay? You know, that guy. Yeah, you, why is he, that <laughs> was out of line. What are you laughing at? <laughs> when if he's cracking up in the bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit was funny. Man. I'll tell you go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny. Though. Why but, are you gay? Yeah, you know. But I think uh, yeah, just as much. I think it was also out of line. Yeah, but you know, my stance on this is 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 this. Um, I I am a I I I I'm I'm, I'm a sangoma. It's, it's a gift, meaning I'm a traditional healer. Okay, I'm of that. I'm of that. Uh, 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 um, yeah, I'm of that persuasion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and from there and in there, one understands that. Uh, sex, sexuality is, is, is sexuality. There are yeah. other bigger issues. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then there might be there, there might be a guy who personally he's really not gay, but hell, man, he's his spiritual guide is a woman. Yeah. You feel me? Mm. And this spiritual guide is into really cute looking boys. Okay. You know. Mm. And then you find out this guy now has a very, but he's really not gay. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is something that I know. I've seen that happen, you know? Okay. There are guys that use that as a way of coming out. Mm. There's guys that use that as a way of saying, um, I'm bisexual. They use that. Mm -hmm. And I and I use, you get what I mean? Yeah. 
But my question is, why is everybody beefing with Uganda and nobody is saying anything and actually trying to put a stance and making a big hoo-ha about Dubai? Yeah. Saudi Arabia? Because they're rich, man. If you're rich, you can do all the human rights violations you want as long as you're rich. Dude, like Ch China just banned China just banned effeminate men. Yeah. Like they banned effemininity in men. Mm -hmm. Not homosexuality, mm. not in, but yo man, you can't be looking cute mm. and having your your hair dyed. And they just banned it from yeah. social media. They just banned it from the commercial media. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Mm. I was very interested to find out how what has been taken that side. You know the the stance of that from that side. But from this side, like I say again, South mm. Africa is a beautiful country, and yeah. it being a beautiful country, um, and a perfect democracy. Yeah. One of its drawbacks is the fact that we get it. Yeah. Like we get it. Okay, mm. you're gay. Cool. You're gay. We mm. get it. Mm. EU, you know? Yeah. I mean, we were one of the first if if not the first country, one of the first uh, we were one of the first countries to legalize gay marriage. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yo, so but you have, along with you have two for yeah, yeah. just married like two like South African South African men just married. Yeah. Okay. Dude, there's South African women that are married to each other. There's guys that are married to. He has a wife, a wife, a wife, and then he has a husband, and then he has a wife, a wife, and a husband. Yeah, shit, man. Yeah. What's happening in SA, man? Damn. <laughs> Dude, it, it's 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 weird that we are having for me as a South African. Yeah. How they've managed. How 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 it's how 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 we've managed to get past the whole sexuality thing. Yeah. Right. And or let me say the homosexuality. Yeah. Uh. uh, uh um. Or, or the homophobia and whatever and all of that. Mm. How we've managed to go past that is by saying. Yeah. Well, you have rights like mm. perfect mm. human rights. Yeah. We are the perfect democracy. Mm. So in a perfect democracy, we have to look at everybody's human rights. I mean, yeah, somebody yeah, like yeah. me, I watch TV and it's okay. There's a gay character. There's a straight character. There's an in character. There's a what? There's a what? Me having this conversation with you right now yeah. on some, how do you guys feel about It's weird for me. Like, dude, what do you mean? Like mm -hmm. when you stand, when you stand up that, with, with that, I'd say then as Kenyans, we are used to dehumanizing each other so much. That's why oh. I feel like now when it comes to that, remember like Your when wife, I told you. When I told you about <laughs> the, the yeah, when I told you about like the the tribal history where the British brought in these people together, and the only way these people can, uh, like keep, you know, uh, the only way to know to feel like this other guy is inferior to you is to dehumanize them. So we've had that dehumanization thing of you are less whatever because you're this tribe, you're less because of this tribe. So now it becomes very easy to dehumanize a gay person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, like, I'd say most gay people are like, yeah, and, and I wouldn't say I'm perfect. I have my, I have my pinch of homophobia. Like, you see, like the way when you're saying, like, you're watching TV. I I have a problem with when I'm watching like a, an action series, like something like a love warrior. Yeah, I, I think we know the one that happened that, that was shot in Kenya. That international one that was shot yeah. in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Van Damme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sense8. You're talking about Sense8? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sense8, yeah, I didn't even have a problem as much as I had a problem with this other one. It's just American. It's fully American. It's called Warrior. You know Warrior? It's like a martial arts. Yeah. It's a martial arts yeah. thing. It's normally on HBO Max. So they have that. Like, there's this... They uh, In the season three, they've introduced, like, these two dudes who are really good fighters, and they're also gay. And they just feels off because that series we knew is it normal for you to speak like that in your country yeah yeah it's normal it's normal it's normal it's normal and, and, and as i said like i'm not i could get i have do, a pinch do you, know, do, you, do you know how do you know how do you know how quickly you get cancelled cancelled in this country yeah okay uh, like uh, you could get cancelled like it's career over yeah for, I know. for us having this conversation online yeah, like it's gotten to a point you you, you know you know that how I see it's like that community has gotten to a point where they are the bullies now. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I know. You know, I know. Like you, you, you can't ask basic questions and get clarity on certain things. I'm like, but hold up, how? Because it, it's honestly speaking, more than anything, it's curiosity, a lack mm -hmm. of understanding, and all we want is just clarity. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that okay, yeah, you're gay, you're what, you're what, you're what. Okay, you're not gonna hit on me, right? Because that's one of the first things that a lot of straight guys say or think. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when there's a lesbian woman in the room or when there's lesbians in the room and your woman is there, it's like, these bitches are not going to hit on my woman, are they? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So some of those boundaries need to be broken and some of those curiosities need to be sorted out outside of the porn world because porn is what most people have their minds on on what homosexuality is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't see it. They, they, they see it as just a form of... Sexual perversion. It's sex more than sexuality. Yeah. I don't know if if, if, if you get the, yeah, the, the, the... Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You get what I mean. Mm. And, and and I'm sorry if I'm using, if, if I'm using a, a, a wrong word for, for, for the people that are going to be watching, but there's a misconception of what homosexuality is yeah. for a lot of straight people. Mm. But yo, what you just said right now, yo, we, I'd be gone. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'd, the you'd be cancelled, yeah, <clears throat> and that's that's we, like I even know, gone. like in in America, I'd be cancelled about, about the same thing because I, I remember like I was having this conversation with a friend of mine, and I was asking him, like right now it's really hard to raise a son, because you remember when we were kids, we we couldn't even watch two girls, uh, a, a guy and a girl kissing, that was just censored, like our parents didn't want us to see that, because as a kid you don't know your sexuality, you see. But now, if you're as a kid, you're watching just two men, two girls, two what? It might end up influencing how you approach sex. Yeah, yeah, Cause, because oh, uh, uh, yeah, I, I yeah. get it. I was watching, I was watching cartoons the other day with my daughter. She's five, mm. and the cartoon for toddlers, and one of the cartoon characters has two mummies. Yeah. Like, huh? You see, that's hold that's up. what I'm talking about. Like, let's like, 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 if like, we could like, keep like, hold, mm. hold up. You know, because now it's 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 for a straight person. Yeah, there's a certain extent where I'm like, no, I think there's certain values that I need to teach my child, mm. and then she needs to make up her own decisions when she's ready and she's grown. Yeah. I will I will not I will not hold her down for that. You know. Yeah. I will not I will not oppress her, but uh, there's a, there's a certain point where where we got to where, where we got to say hold up, bro, look. You and I need to continue this this conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me this. Uh, uh, we need to continue this whole conversation. If you could just stop recording quickly, I just have a question to ask you. Okay, okay. Please.